Hi, my name is Philip Lin. I'm a medical doctor and senior pastor of Skyline Church in Malaysia. I was born into a second generation nominal Anglican family on my father's side. My mother was from a Buddhist background but became a churchgoer in order to marry my father. But it was she who first brought my sister and I to Sunday school when we were kids. My father was totally nominal and almost never went to church. He spent most of his weekends on the golf course. My mum brought me to the old colonial Anglican church. At the age of 14, I gave my heart to Jesus through a missionary from, the north, from Northern Ireland. Uh, he befriended me and taught me to play tennis. The thing that really struck me now was how time and again he would run around picking up balls for me on the courts. An unheard of thing for a European to do for an Asian in those days. His genuine humility and servanthood touched me. He was the one who gave me my first Bible and taught me to do quiet times and to pray. And amazingly, after my conversion, this man, Cecil McSparren, continued to pray for me every Thursday for the last 30 years. What I am today, I owe in a very big way to my spiritual father and mentor. Although shortly after that, uh, he was posted away and we were separated for many years. We didn't meet again until 15 years later when he married my wife and I. Around the time of my conversion, I came very close to losing my life three times. The first time was at a busy crossroad. I started to run across the street thinking everything was clear when I suddenly felt the urge to stop. And in that instant, an army truck just flew by. I hadn't seen it before, almost half a step, and it would have been the instant death for me. The second time was when I was stung by a catfish on a fishing trip. I was taken to the hospital in severe pain. It was a festive holiday and there were no doctors there. So the duty nurse gave me an anti-tetanus shot, which I was instantly allergic to. And I collapsed immediately unconscious with minutes to live. Luckily, she knew the antidote and gave me a second shot, which saved my life. The third time was when I had a ruptured appendix infection that had spread throughout my whole abdomen and entered my bloodstream. On that night, when they wheeled me into the operating theatre, my mother knelt on the floor outside the closed doors of the operating theatre and prayed, God, save my son and he will serve you for life. I hung between life and death for nearly two weeks and needed a second operation to save me. All these three narrow escapes on my life happen in the 12 months following my salvation. It was clear that Satan was out to take me out. I eventually went to England to study medicine and looking back, there were three critical points in my student life that shaped me. Firstly, when I arrived at university, I joined a large and vibrant Christian union at Oxford and was exposed to some of the most passionate Christian believers and finest preachers in England. It was there that I became convinced that Christianity was intellectually robust and defensible. It happened uh, that my conviction deepened during that time and that Christian faith is not only not anti-intellectual or irrational, but I have held that the faith is strong up to today. That is why I still keep up with my scientific readings and see no reason to change my mind. Secondly, my eyes were open to the miraculous in my student days. At the end of my first year, I went on a summer mission with Operation Mobilization in Italy. It was there that I saw how God provided for our needs by faith as we shared the gospel. On the last night, I was asked to share my testimony in our campsite cafe where we were camping. We were due to leave the next day, but didn't have enough money to pay for the bill. That night, the campsite owner was converted. He was so touched, he knocked 50% off our bill. God had provided for us again at the last minute. Then on the way back from Italy, the brakes of our van dramatically failed while crossing the mountains from Italy to Austria that night. I saw with my own eyes God restoring those brakes miraculously after prayer without help from any garage or mechanic. It stunned me that God could seal off a leaking brake cylinder and fill it with new brake fluid. I realized then 
that the miraculous is not irrational, but supra-rational. And today, I believe not just in a God of truth, but also in a God of miracles. Thirdly, as a student, I experienced God's grace and mercy firsthand. In my third year of medical school, I backslided because I got into a wrong relationship with uh, a girlfriend. My studies and spiritual life spiraled into a tailspin for a whole year. When she broke off, I went into deep depression. It was then that I cried out to God and He lifted me out of the pit. I somehow found the willpower and strength to cover the whole of my third year work in just two months before the exams. It nearly killed me, but I passed. And I said to myself, never again. I learned that God's grace includes real mercy. When I finished medical school, I took a year off to go to Bible school and did further postgraduate medical specialization before returning to Malaysia with my newly married wife, Nancy. At the time, the church was weak, the nation was unstable, with lots of race issues and religious problems arising from Islamic pressure, and medical services in those days were quite basic. I was posted to a small rural hospital. There the Lord hid me. Those were my hidden days where few people knew me. The Lord used them to test my character and shake my faith. Eventually, I became head of medicine in the capital city of Kota Kinabalu in East Malaysia and later started my own practice. Then God led me to start a workplace church in the city called Skyline. Today, I'm the bivocational senior pastor of Skyline Church with a team of 13 bivocational pastors like me. It is a disciple-making church. I'm still practicing as a doctor. Nancy and I have now three grown-up children, and one of whom is a doctor like me and serving in a church in Australia. The most important years were those years that nobody saw, but where I learned to pay my dues. I want to share with you three things in those hidden years that shaped my life. Firstly, I owe a great deal to mentors at various points in my spiritual journey. I've never had the privilege of one single mentor continuously, but at moments in my life when a mentor was needed, God has led me to the right person. Having mentors from a fairly wide spectrum has exposed me to the richness of the kingdom and helped me in my ministry today to all types of churches. So the first wisdom I'd like to deposit with you is have many mentors, not just one, and you will be a lot richer. Secondly, radical discipleship can only flow out from radical grace. This was the Apostle Paul's journey and in many ways, it's my journey. At many points in my life, I made terrible decisions and experienced bad failures, personal and moral, that should, in principle, disqualify me from pastoring or spiritual leadership. But here I am today. Without experiencing radical grace, radical discipleship would become legalism. And here's the third and final thing. The prayers of others have made all the difference to my life. I found that even if our life is well charted out, and our discipleship is intentional, there are many unpredictable things that could, that could really trip us up. It has always puzzled me that all things being equal, why is it that some people finish well and others don't? I'm convinced prayer is part of the key to this answer. My spiritual father prayed for me for 30 years. My wife, all these 38 years of our marriage. And my church intercessors, these last 20 years. Sustained prayer is the unseen force to help us finish well. Without it, many of us will sink. This is Pastor Philip sharing with you my journey uh, as a disciple maker, as well as as a disciple and follower of the Lord Jesus Christ.